welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are trying to keep up with a fast-paced meta with Jeskai Planeswalkers. This deck burst onto the scene thanks to John Rolfe. John Rolfe is a member of the MPL. He will be playing this deck in MPL League play as I'm recording this a few hours from now, today. And it he reached number two on the Mythic Ladder with this deck, which is a very exciting Thing as it's different. It's the, one of the first super successful decks we've seen from War of the Spark that isn't like an update to Esper Control, an update to Mono Red, an update to White Aggro. So this is an exciting list and it is just, I, I think what a lot of people might have both desired and feared when they heard about the 37 Planeswalkers set that is War of the Spark, which is basically we're spamming Planeswalkers. We're just casting Planeswalkers over and over and over and burying the opponent in value. This comes off as a bit of a mid-range deck as early in the game, we're just about position, position, threats that the opponent must answer. And then in the late game, we just explode with Sarkin the Masterless attacking for an obscene amount of Planeswalker damage or using Urza's Ruinous Blast to exile all the opponent's cool stuff before blowing them out. The deck is got some interesting cards like Spark Double, Dove in Hand of Control, which is more effective than you may have expected, the best three mana Planeswalkers in Narset and Teferi Time Raveler, the Enigmatic Mentor is another Planeswalker that is just a bit better than you expect, sort of being like a History of Benalia for blue with a few more abilities, the looting when it enters the battlefield is great for mitigating Flood and making sure you have the right cards. We also have Philtib, the, the Fibble, 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 what it, Fibble, 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 whatever, the Lost, um, and there's no magical way to pull it out of the library. It's simply a legendary creature that's on the battlefield to make it so that, one, you can chump for your Planeswalkers, but two, you can cast your Urza's Ruinous Blast and use your Mox Amber more. Four Spell Pierces defend your Planeswalkers from spell interaction, as the opponent attacking them with creatures is going to be difficult with so many of them, and for them to play out their creatures, they have to play into the Urza's Ruinous Blast. You might say, why only two? Well, Narset Parter of Veils helps dig for this pretty aggressively. So, you use the Spell Pierce to make sure that Vraska's Contempt doesn't take out your critters, and you use Urza's Ruinous Blast to wipe up the creatures. We also have an important element of the deck in life gain with Interplanar Beacon. I still say bacon for fun. You don't have to correct me. Just having fun. I call it Interplanar Bacon when I'm in the game. I know. But uh, there, it's also the lovely background art up here in case you haven't noticed. So um, yeah, Interplanar Beacon gains one life whenever you cast a Planeswalker spell. We plan to do that a lot. If you are against red and you draw one of these, you're doing okay. If you draw two of these against red and you cast two or three Planeswalkers, they, they're they just the saddest of red decks. You've never seen a red deck this sad, I promise you. It's wonderful. And of course, Esper Control has a hard time keeping up with so many Planeswalkers and especially the effects of the Time Raveler, the Narset, and the Dovin. So this deck is also very good against Control. If you can be good against uh, Esper and you can be good against Mono Red, I think you've got a pretty nice deck. I'm going to be playing in best of one today for the uh, sake of the variety of the matches, giving you all a look at many different battles. But for those of you who like sideboards, I will go over it. Dovin's Veto is great against other Planeswalker decks and control decks. Sorcery Spyglass against other Planeswalker decks. The Prison Realm will come in against any must answer threats. I also sideboarded in against Red to have more quick answers to Runaway Steamkin. Deafening Clarion comes in against small creature decks, white and red especially. The Wanderer comes in against red decks to prevent all those lightning strikes, but also comes in against large green decks where you can minus it to exile their creatures. Anything with Rekindling Phoenix, you also want the Wanderer. Karn, an additional Karn comes in against control and midrange for grindy games. And Lyra Dawnbringer will come in against the red decks, but can also come in in the mirror as Urza's Ruinous Blast will not remove it, and Lightning Strike will not remove it, so it's a pretty good card in the mirror, especially if your opponent boards out Dove in Hand of Control, which is pretty common. And then Imbolus's Clutches comes in for the mirror, but can also be against any other decks with giant uh, that, that focus on like mid-ranging you and eventually winning with Ugins and Lilianas and Teferis. You can just steal their stuff. It's, it's good. It's good stuff. All right. Let's go play some ranked games, see how this deck is doing today. 
Hey, we have a decent curve with a two drop. We are on the draw, which is very negative. Uh, we've done some pre-sideboarding, just so you know. The four spell pierces have turned into one spell pierce, one Dovin's Veto, and three Deafening Clarions, and a Spark Double got removed from the deck as well. So it's just some pre-sideboarding against aggro, which is over 80% of the ladder, and there you go. 80% of best of one ladder, I would say. Too many lands, too many lands. Steamkin? Always. Okay. Land and kill it now. Before anything worse can happen to me. We're going to be taking a lot of shockland damage. Without a beacon drawn, this is a very bad spot to be in. Ouch. Big sadness. And the opponent misses a land drop. I'm going to shock. We need to get Narset going. We need to find Deafening Clarion. I guess I'll take it to Fairy. It can bounce the Steamkin. Hopefully the Steamkin can't go completely off here. They probably need to draw land for that to happen. And then triple one drop. Uh-huh. Wizards Lightning my face. Sure. Does the opponent attack me? They're ignoring Narset. They must have a lot of burn. All right. How about a Clarion now? Jesus. What is wrong with my deck? All right. Let's bounce the Steamkin. See if we draw a land that doesn't hurt us, but we don't. Been a rough game so far. None of the key cards for the matchup yet. That's brutal. Down go the Planeswalkers. <laughs> and we drew it. Hallelujah. Took a minute, but can't be too upset when it does show up. Enter tapped. We've got a spell pierce for if the opponent wants to burn our face. We've got a lightning strike. For the Steamkin. Let's see what the opponent does. They pass the turn. Another Clarion. So I think I like playing Philothib holding up Lightning Strike and Spell Pierce here. We could also play the Mentor. The problem with that is that the opponent gets to untap with Steamkin, which is a very hard thing to deal with. Plus, giving them just a target for something to shoot will probably get me them to play something for me to Spell Pierce here. A fourth land is interesting. Because now I could play the Mentor. But then I take down the Spell Pierce Shields, which I do think I'm going to need. So let's play this tapped. The opponent has three spells, so when the first trigger for the Steam King goes on the stack, we can Lightning Strike it then. I want it to sit around for just a second. I want to encourage my opponent, if they have more creatures, to play them. So that the Clarion can get them. Here comes the Steamkin. Let's block. Opponent will almost certainly throw something at me now. Uh-huh. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. Alright. We'll strike away your Steamkin. Well, we get to untap with a Fibble Fib. We can give it Lifelink. Actually, this might, the Lifelink might matter as we get the Mentor going. So I think that getting Mentor going is better. I do want to keep holding up the Spell Pierce to hope to tag some kind of a lethal burn spell. This stick means the opponent has another shock, I think. Yes, they do. Down to one. Life is sad. They did an excellent job also playing exactly around the Spell Pierce. Which, if they have, I guess, a Wizard's Lightning, they still get me. I could use a Clarion here to go up to two and play around Goblin Chain Whirler. And Fanatical Firebrand. The Spell Pierce, though, counters Wizard's Lightning and Skewer the Critics without Spectacle. So, I'm going to hang on to that. 
Also not even attacking. <laughs> like double hasted lava runner, for example. Okay. Wow. Well, it wouldn't matter. All right, we've got some beacons. We've got a curve. We're on the draw, which is oftentimes terrible in best of one, but we'll give it a shot. Wow, I hit that keep button at record speed, I think. I think I can lead with the fortress into a beacon, into a beacon to gain more life. I just don't know if the life gain is going to matter very much. But yeah. We'll go for the beacon curve out. And that's not a thought eraser. Consider myself lucky. Let's go, little guy. Give me that card. Sweet. More land. Jade Light Ranger. Let the party begin. Command the Dread Horde. On top of the deck. Into the graveyard. How exciting. This one will get feisty, I'm sure. Uh, let's see. Narset. Give me some life. Give me a card. If the opponent has Command the Dread Horde, then Urza's Ruinous Blast won't do much against them, but Deafening Clarion still might. But if we reveal it, it definitely won't. So let's grab the Time Raveler instead. Uh huh. Fibble, fib, fib, fibble, fibble, fib. Take one for the team. Beacon of our opponent's own and a Tamiyo. Let the party begin. And the name is... What do you name? What do you name? Vraska. All right. So Vraska's cool. It comes down and kills other Planeswalkers, which it has to be what the opponent's thinking about. Let's minus our Narset and see what we see. Sarkin. Sweet. More beacons. So we could make a 2-2 and loot, or we could time ravel and bounce and just make the opponent have no battlefield presence here. And I think that that's best, as it keeps the opponent from getting anywhere here, attacking our Planeswalkers. Let's slow this down. Even if they get some value replaying the Jade Light Ranger, it's okay. Um, what to discard? All the Sarkins. I don't want to discard any Planeswalkers because our opponent is playing a Command the Dreadhorde deck, and they're going to scoop it up right away. They know that Sarkin is coming for them, I believe. Alright, we're on the play. Our hand is good against red, with a Deafening Clarion ready to go, so that's where I want to be. I can do one thing in this format, I just want to be alright against red. Let's see if the opponent's on red or something else. Looks like Esper Control. Now our hand is not good against Esper Control. We could definitely have uh, had a better grip. If the opponent thought erasures the Dovin here, we just were doing nothing forever and ever. And it looks like nothing is the plan. But maybe we can rip a Teferi or a Narset off the top and the game will be more interesting. And our opponent keeps on top, and there's the Teferi. Who's the man? This guy. Let's go ahead and draw another card. Oh! oh the salt! The salt is so real. I bet they kept an absorb on top, or a... <laughs> yeah. The salt is so real. All right, we're on the play. We got a Veto and a Narset, so we'll give it a try. It is awkward to have the beacons and the Veto, so I do have to lead. I should lead with this in case I draw Spell Pierce. And let's see what our opponent's up to. Red, lava. All right, do I shock myself here? Oh, I should have led with the Foundry. Burned. But no, I think I'm going to save the veto for later rather than shock to hold up a veto. The opponent can play around that so easily. Even if it is like the potential to counter a light up the stage. I think we gotta save it for later. Mountain and lightning? No. Just gonna hold that up. Well, 
That's a frustrating one, because if I play the Narset, the opponent can use all their mana to use the Wizard's Lightning on it. But I still think that's worth it. We gain two life and a card, and we take away a Wizard's Lightning from the dome. So let the Planeswalkers begin. Double, double beacon. This is what we're looking for. Nice and early, too. Yeah, here comes the lightning. Hmm. Dovin is decent against our opponent, too. But so is Sarkin. But I'm going to take the cheaper one. As mana efficiency can be a big deal in the matchup. Alright, the opponent pretty much gets their way with us this turn. And the stage is more lit than ever. And look at the burn spells! Fortunately, every Planeswalker we cast negates some of that burn. See what I did there? Negate. But I have veto, so that joke wouldn't be as... F it would be funnier if I had an actual negate to negate some burn later. I wonder what we're leaving a mana up for. Oh my god. Just... Let's see how let's see how quickly we get the scoops here. Or if we get the scoops. Our opponent, you know, they may They may be made of tougher stuff. They may they may not immediately scoop just because I can gain some life from Interplanar Beacon. The burn spells keep rolling in. I'm discarding the sulfur falls because we need the white source for the veto and the blast. Remember, Interplanar Beacon doesn't make white mana for Ruinous Blast or Dovin's Veto, just for Planeswalkers. Reading this card, yeah, targeting these with burn spells is hard. Ticks all your mana. The opponent does it anyway. And we drew the white source. Alright. So, I like having Dovin's Veto available. The Time Raveler can bounce the Lava Runner. But the Lava Runner is very easy to replay. I think I'm much better off playing the Hand of Control. Up to 20. And let's just make this thing not deal damage for a turn and try to get a better Ruinous Blast with Patience. Chain Whirls, sure. Another Lava Runner, okay. This is looking really good for the Blast. <laughs> well said, Dovin. Goodbye, your creatures. And we don't want to minus Dovin. Keep him around. He's a good boy. Chandra, right through the Dovin's veto. Pretty hype. Alright, what's my next trick? Let's get the mentor going. Maybe we loot away one of the an extra land, get our 2 2. Yeah, dropping off the land seems fine. We can keep the veto up or we can play a fibble thib, but. Fibble thib. But uh, I like the veto. No problem. Fire can't solve. That Chandra is going to be obnoxious, though. The fact that it can deal damage to a Planeswalker when you hit it is really painful. So there's a Lightning Strike. Let's just say no to the Lightning Strike. There might be something like a, an Experimental Frenzy I also have to deal with, and maybe that's a little risky, but Teferi can bounce that. What are we going after? What you want, won't want. Neither? There's a Lightning Strike. So this is complicated. The Chandra Static deals damage. Um, yeah, the Chandra Static deals damage to Planeswalkers or yeah, opponents or Planeswalkers, and the Dovin can stop it from dealing damage for one turn, but then it can't. Chandra can't take damage either. It's a complicated situation. I like leading on the Lost. See what card we get. Of course, more Lost. Uh, let's make our 2 2. Narset is excellent. What's the discard? 
Probably the Lost. Gain a bunch of life, play a Narset. Well, if we attack here, the opponent then can kill one of these. Or they can block and protect. Let's see what they choose to do. Block and protect. So what I kind of like the idea of is letting the Planeswalkers on the battlefield get removed so that I can take out this Chandra. I have learned much. So what I'm going to do is pass, planning to Lightning Strike the Chandra, who will then probably kill the Dovin. Now, again, if I minus Dovin on the Chandra itself, that's not that good of a play. We could also just play a Time Raveler and plus it and let the opponent have another turn of Chandra. And if Chandra's at 7, we can attack it and Lightning Strike it next turn. And then what do we lose? We lose a Time Raveler? I guess that's not a big deal. We can draw a card with the Time Raveler before it dies. Now remember, if I target the Chandra with the Dovin, it prevents all damage dealt to the Chandra, which is a very bad thing if you want to attack your Chandra or lightning strike the Chandra. You don't, you don't want that. That's not good. I actually misread this many times, but it is prevent all damage that would be dealt to and dealt by a permanent. You can make, you can make their Planeswalker basically unkillable. So now I do expect this Chandra might try to kill this Teferi. So I'm going to minus it to draw a card. Oh, I guess I could use it on my own Fibble Fib. If I attack this Chandra and five counters come off, will the opponent kill this Teferi or me? Probably the Teferi. And I don't need the Fibble Fib's attacking damage. I have a Lightning Strike, so yeah, we'll bounce our own Fibble Fib here. Get some extra cards. Now we will attack Chandra. See where the opponent sends the damage. I imagine Teferi will die because of this. Now we'll throw a lightning strike at the rest of Chandra. We'll throw three damage at my face. And now we can play our other planeswalkers in peace. So here comes Narset. Gaining that life back. Digging up. Dovin? Sure. I'll even pay two life here. Total flex against red to replay the lost. Keep digging. And another Chandra joins the field. I had a feeling there might be another one. That's always the case with like legendary planeswalkers when the opponent's holding back cards when they should have been playing them. And here's a wizard's lightning. Okay. Let's make sure we use this Narset. Another lightning strike. Excellent. So we can go attack here and here. Use the lightning strike to finish the Chandra. Leave the opponent without any more card draw. They send the damage to Narset, but Narset's on empty. It's okay. Lightning strike. Take three to the face. We'll gain it right back. Here's Dovin. Here's Teferi. And while the opponent's empty-handed, I think I'll bounce Fibblefib and keep the value train going. And end the turn. Our opponent could draw like an experimental frenzy here. Ooh, that's not what they want. I'll take four. And I'm at 26, that is not, that is not the draw for you. Alright, Fibblethib back to the battlefield, draw a card. Every micro advantage adding up against red over time. There's such a lean, efficient deck is mono red aggro. If you can find anything threatening that efficiency with slightly more powerful cards, especially those that can draw cards, mono red's in trouble, but if they get that traction against you early, there's not much to be done. But this red mage is tough stuff. Not giving up. Refusing to surrender. Is Fibblethib going down now? Is it time? 
All right, back into the deck with you. Or no, that's when it's targeted by a spell, not an ability. Learning as I go every day, my friends. It never stops with magic. Narset, can you find me a Sarkin to help finish this game? Not yet. Not yet. I could take another Dovin. I think that's better against red than... Well, I guess cycling to fairies is kind of fun to draw more and more cards and get closer to the Sarkin. Fine. Alright, get in there, Tutu. So next turn, I'll probably throw off this Teferi to draw a card and play a new one and draw another card. If we have to. Risk factor. Four damage it is. And the opponent finally scooping it up. They, the, triple, the triple bacon was just too much. The all bacon diet. Hmm. On the draw with a Clarion and a Strike, should be okay against aggro. Let's see, see what's up. White mana. Not quite sure what that means yet. The Lost is gonna help out. Find us that land, right? Uh-oh, blue-white do nothing. Revitalize probably in hand based on that pause. Could be an opt to. And we found the land. Life is good. Hmm, if it was revitalized, it would have been played. Our opponent's playing on full control mode. Alright, get in there. Let's see if we can shut down that full control mode immediately. If our opponent has a negate or something, so be it. Alright, we'll see how many of these they have. We'll test them. Seal away. Oh, nice. That's a window. The opponent says, you don't have another Time Raveler, do you? And I say, yes. In fact, I do. And let's bounce your seal away, getting back our Fibble Fib and drawing two cards. Because that's pretty sweet. Slight misplay. I should have held off on playing the land. Because I could have played this land without having to pay any life. Teferi, sure. Teferi's about to die and doesn't know it. Our opponent can't play at instant speed because of the Teferi, right? Yeah, so even an enchantment like Seal Away with Flash can't be played at Flash speed. Don't worry. I got this. Pay two life. Sarkin. Make a, let's turn Teferi, in, ca in case Teferi wasn't good enough yet, let's turn Teferi into a dragon and send Teferi to kill Teferi. How about that? How about that little combo? <laughs> How about that tag team? Blast zone. The opponent's gonna need that blast zone. Let's play our sorceries at instant speed. That's more like it. Our opponent can't even settle the wreckage us here, so crashing in for a ton of damage seems just lovely. Two. They can get this up to three, so playing our three mana planeswalker, like playing another Narset is particularly risky. We could just play another Sarkin and make another dragon. Hmm. But I think we'll go... We'll definitely do this part. No, Cleveland, I said, Are you ready? Bang. So I'm really confident that the opponent's plan is to put counters on Blast Zone, blow it for three mana, then they would have access to a seal away. They might also be thinking of a Chemist's Insight, in which case a Narset would be mean, but they would have played it last turn. And I don't want my Narset to get blown up. If I play a second Sarkin, how... I mean, maybe I'm just supposed to say go, but if I play a second Sarkin and make a dragon, that's so much threat. For the opponent to deal with. And then one, two, three, four. If four gets through next turn. And then five. Oh, it's really close too. I'm gonna do it. Second Sarkin. We begin. 
and dragon. Your end has arrived. Counters on the blast zone. Now Teferi can get blown up. And the opponent will need to figure out a way around a potentially lethal attack without the mana for Settle the Wreckage. Here it comes, and our opponent has three mana open. We know about a seal away. Our opponent with a Teferi of their own. But they're going to be tapped out now. They take out the dragon. So this attacks for five. This is three damage. Narset could find a lightning strike to be lethal. So let's see if we can do it. That's that's not good. That's I mean at least I don't have to draw them now. Then always look on the bright side of life. Fibble Fib, you're doing work. Go take care of that time raveler for me. This is hardly my worst. Got our opponent at six. I'm confident I'll be able to sneak my lightning strike through their defenses at some point because of how strained they are to deal with all these permanents, so I'm not going to cast it yet. That could come back to bite me. It's Kanta. Yep. How's your graveyard doing? Four. Still a little ways from a flip. Mana up for absorb and seal away here. Let's start with activating Narset. That's something the opponent will have to counter. But since we revealed it, and the opponent knows they have to counter it, should I try to attack first? I guess if they, since they have the mana for seal away and the absorb, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So we'll just run this into the counter spell. No, we won't. The opponent didn't have it. Didn't have it this time. Okay, I'll take it. Double Bacon. <laughs> and I have Deafening Clarion in my hand, which has been something I just don't get today. Let's do it. And of course we're not against a red deck this time. Why can't I play the red decks whenever I want to? Whining. But hopefully the Time Raveler is good enough here. And I think we're pretty favored against decks that are slower anyway. Like, control decks have a really hard time with all these Planeswalkers. All right. Fibble Fib. Gets in easy. Do we go for the Time Raveler? Such a... Such a soul crusher. All right. Got him, I think. Oh, no, it's sticking. Ah! It does make a lot of sense that there would be a veto there, but, you know, sometimes you gotta make them have it. Wow, last zone in Esper. That's about as greedy as possible. I don't think it gets greedier. Hmm. Let's resolve the Narset, because with Narset on the field, the opponent has to get rid of it, or else uh, they can't minus their Teferi to draw a card, and their big Teferi doesn't draw a card. And plus with a Fibblethib on the battlefield, we can kind of attack down a Teferi that comes down minuses to deal with the Narset. The stick here is just Blast Zone being Blast Zone. For some reason it always sticks. I guess you could activate it for double X equals zero is the thing. Ooh, Mox Amber. You can help me continue to get on the board. All right, go show Teferi what's up. Hi, how you doing? Hey, that was uncalled for. Play another one. Get deeper in the deck. Don't see any reason to hold it. I don't see the opponent ki killing this little guy anytime soon. Let's see what the opponent does with the Time Raveler. It would be a big miss if they minus because, yeah, Narset. They shock? 
for land number five. Wow. Big miss, I think. Oh, I see. That's so that Fibblethib, um, I got it. That's so that Teferi stays on the battlefield. So Fibblethib doesn't kill Teferi, but I still get to draw a card. Veto off the top. Hmm, we could try to mentor into a land. And that would leave a 2-2. And if we draw the land, we have the veto. We could play a Sarkin, though, and make a 4-4. Four -four. Actually, we can't, because uh, the Mox Amber doesn't produce the mana right now. So this is the only line that's really good. And we drew the land. So clutch. Deafening Clarions we definitely do not need. The opponent knows about Fibblethib, and we can't play a Veto because of the Time Raveler, so we may as well play the Fibblethib. Does it open us up to Thought Erasure? We'll see if the opponent can deal with the board, though. Don't worry, I got this. Instant Speed Sorceries? No time for oh my. Reading. Contempting. Okay. Opponent tapped out. They're going to untap two with Dominaria. Let's see if they have yet another veto. Another veto would be tough. All right. So we could go for the Nar... Now that we have two Narsets, it's also pretty brutal. But if we don't resolve one, we won't, won't resolve the other. Let's see if we can kill... So the first thing we do is kill the Time Raveler. And then we have Veto and Narset. And the opponent scoops it up. I guess they... They just... Maybe they didn't realize they'd have to pay six for the Contempt. I'm pretty surprised by that scoop. Okay, I'm back for a little recap. If I'm going to play best of one on ladder, this is the configuration I'm going to use. I'm going to remove one spark double, and I'm going to remove three spell pierces, and I'm going to add a Dovin's Veto for something that can hit a counter, be a counter spell later in the game, and later than the spell pierces, and I'm going to add three Deafening Clarions. Good players who are familiar with the list already are already playing around Spell Pierce, and I still want one as kind of a threat to them or just to let them know what's up every now and then, but I like having the Veto as another option. And the Deafening Clarions are just necessary. Uh, the, the best of one meta is so aggressive that I think that running these in the deck is just a must. Red, um, Gruel, and white there's still enough of it that you need the card and it's unlike um in a lot of like mid-range decks it's not a worthless card in the matchups that don't involve creatures because the enigmatic mentor can just still discard these so that's fine it's also really good against the thief of sandy hero precinct one starts from esper midrange which is still lurking around and otherwise this is the deck i would run i don't like two spark doubles i'm much better like one not gaining the life off the beacons has come up a few times, and just not being able to cast this has come up several times when good opponents are just killing your Planeswalkers with their aggressive starts. So this is how I would best have won it, and this is still the sideboard you can use for best of three. Um, the deck, it's, it's so up and down. When you are behind and not playing... When you're on the draw, not playing a Planeswalker till turn three with nothing to protect it, you just get run over so badly and you're just not insured to draw your sweepers. But when you feel like you've got things going, when you lightning strike something, play an Narset, minus it, and find like a Ruinous Blast, another Planeswalker, or a Clarion against aggro, you feel so far ahead. So I'm, I'm still torn. I've played the deck for a little over an hour and I've been, quite honestly, like I've lost a lot of very ugly games and I've won like in ridiculous fashion uh, where the opponents are scooping so fast to like one or two planeswalkers on the battlefield. Either they find this deck particularly annoying or the static and complicated abilities of all these planeswalkers create such a mental tax on the opponent that they're just, as soon as they make a mistake, such as not realizing that Dovin makes them pay more for a spell or that Kazmina makes them pay two more to target it, um, or to target, yeah, um, that like they just, they're out, peace out. I can't do this anymore. This is horrible. All right. I'm going to leave it there for the day. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll go to the home screen. 
I'm also continuing to write weekly coverage of magic events for TempoStorm, so please check out my articles on TempoStorm.com under the magic section or the article section. And please check out my website, CovertGoBlue.com, where you can learn more about supporting the channel and leaving a tip if you enjoy the content. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.